Hey, so guys, I moved to Bitwarden. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, hang on one second. I gotta check. I gotta get the password from my phone to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what it's like uh yeah yeah well they right. did warn you that you'd be in jail there is a warden yeah, there's warden in the name uh that's all awesome. i mean they could have just called it password hell uh. <laughs> so yeah guys i did it i moved to bit warden i'm off last Good. pass how do you like it uh no seriously it, it's great um um, and I don't have, you know, face recognition enabled. So basically, every time I have to log in to a new service on my phone, I have to pull up the Bitwarden app, type in my password, which mm-hmm. is easy to remember. So it's not a, that big a deal. And then it times out after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know? <laughs> I always think it's baseball. You're genius, one, Patrick, you're genius. Two. <laughs> That's the same as my luggage. <laughs> Oh, you know, what really sucks is I used to have this case for my guitar. And my guitar is my electric guitar is a Gibson Les Paul from 1983. It's like my pride and joy, you know. And so I used to have this case, but it came with a combination lock on it. And I never used it to lock the case because I could never remember the combination. Sure. <laughs> and then one day, it's just like I'm, somebody bumped it or something, and I Don't. couldn't figure it out. And I had to, like, pry it open and break oh, the case. Geez. Buy a new case. Mm-hmm. Security is the enemy of convenience, mm-hmm. a wise man once said. percent But anyway, Poor I'm Patrick. glad I'm on Bitwarden because it's, it's great. Keep yeah. us updated on how you like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so is Richard Campbell. Richard Campbell's on Bitwarden too. Good. Mm. Yeah, and I've, I'm still I'm still a one password fan, but um, I have to I still have to look at Bitwarden. Basically, you can export your entire vault from LastPass and then import it into Bitwarden. Ooh, yeah. that's cool. And you can share an account with other people on your team. You don't share your passwords, of course, but they can use your account as well. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I, def- I definitely have to look at it. I mean, the only thing I don't like about 1Password is the price. It's reasonably hefty. Yeah, that's cool. All right, well, let me know when you guys run your own server. I think everybody's going to want to park their server. Well, you still need a server. license. Heck yeah. Heck you yeah. still need a license uh, to run the advanced features. And I'm yeah. not sure, when you run your own server, I'm not sure how many user accounts you get. Um, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Yeah, yeah. We're going to find out. Cool. And I'll try and hack it first. Well, LastPass is still in the news, of course. Um, yeah. I think they're story number three. So yeah. Let's, let's get to it, but yeah, by starting at it. number one. All right. What is it? <laughs> I, AI. AI, 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 AI. Oh, my gosh. So what, 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 what more bad news? The only worst news for AI in chat GPT would be that it had – Confidential documents in its garage, um, <laughs> but, but something worse might be that it's been plagiarizing. It it's following after the old first lady, and it's plagiarizing things. <laughs> wow, coming out hot, you, Patrick! You're just like busting Woo. everybody now. Everybody, yeah, everybody, burn it all. Cease down. fire. Targets down. <laughs> Boom, Damn. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Double tap, triple tap, just to be sure. So, so according to futurism.com, uh, the chat API not only is riddled with errors, but it's also substantially plagiarizing. So they're finding that it's not creating things yeah. uh, out of thin air and out of its own intellect. It's, it's stealing broadly from other pieces of uh, data on the web. Well, not all AI is doing that. Um, there was one thing that I uh, linked to, but we didn't actually use this in the, the show. But I, I guess I can put a link to it about Getty Images. Mm, yeah. So Getty yep. Images is a, um, you know, a, a stock footage or a stock photo place that yeah. people subscribe to. And they're suing the creators of this tool called Stable Diffusion. And that's not ChatGPT, but it is AI. And it's basically scraping their content and, and putting it together. And how they found out was somebody posted an image that has a Getty Images logo in it oh. that was created <laughs> from Stable Diffusion. Oof. Oops. Not good. Dope. So the AI needs to be smarter about stealing content. Is that the point of this? Am I getting it right? I think you're right. I mean, if you wanted to give them some criminal career <laughs> advice. <laughs> 
right? Right. Just be you're gonna smart steal, about it. You're, you're going to steal, steal a paper. <laughs> Don't leave the author's name on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, too much. All right. So uh, what do we know about this uh, CNET thing? Well, CNET wrote a lot of articles. They th- They did an experiment. That was a little more than an experiment. They thought, wow, we can get a lot of content if we get these AIs that are available to uh, write articles about yeah, whole, all sorts of things. Right. And uh, I mean, for example, I, there's, I don't know that this is an example, but this could be an example. Imagine that they wanted an article written and the prompt was write an article summarizing the the, the need and usage of uh, password managers. Right. Sure. And that's. Great, because it's general information, you know, Mm -hmm. that the API could probably like summarize it for people and write it in a way that, you know, people, but it would say things that were wrong, like, Mm. um, you know, you can store your children in the thing. And, you know, your, your car keys can also be stored and and it would just get things like obviously wrong. And that came out a couple of weeks ago, but now we're finding that it's not just, um, error written. It's actually stealing content that would yeah. rise to the level of plagiarism. Right. So I listened to this podcast called Away With Words, which is great for language wonks. And one of them is a, a linguist and a dictionary editor. And he, he's also an old IT guy. So he's just as familiar with exchange as he is the uh, Oxford English Dictionary. Wow. And um, so the other one is uh, an expert on language, uh, especially the roots of language, like germanic roots and latin and you know and all of those roots of our language and basically uh she was talking about uh an article that was written that that basically she asked chat gpt to write she basically said write a it was like if if we went to chat gpt and said hey write um what do you call it like a a a one paragraph description a promotion description of security this week. Mm-hmm. And she said, she read what it was, and she said, and each one of those sentences is actually unique. A- after Googling each sentence, she could not find them exactly. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, so ChatGPT sometimes does a good job of, of synthesizing stuff that's out there without actually plagiarizing it yeah but if you had a student in middle school and you said well most of their papers aren't plagiarized yeah that wouldn't be sufficient no of course not of course none of them are plagiarized you know when my kids were in school wikipedia was the bugaboo like yeah don't go to wikipedia because it could be wrong yeah right but but here's the deal like i i I, and I've talked to, uh, you know, a lot of, um, teachers and I actually have one of my cl- really close friends is, is in academia. And, and they start talking about like, what do we do with chat GPT? What do we do with, you know, kids in chat GPT and that sort of stuff? And, and these, this is very similar to when calculators came out and math teachers are like, Oh my God, we're never going to have to be able to do, you know, kids aren't yeah. going to know math anymore. Um, right, you know, right. I think you have they to were adopt. Right. <laughs> well, it goes it goes back further have than you, that have you uh, ever tried to buy something during a blackout it doesn't work there was uh, some greek philosophers who were worried that once we teach people to read and write then there'll be no need for books yes yep right yes so it goes back a long way so i don't know i don't know what to do but um uh, you, did I tell you, I think it was last week or the week before I told you that I had a conversation with ChatGPT and I asked it to write a little JavaScript thing. Did, mm, I, yeah. did I share that with you? You did. About yes. the audio file? The audio yeah, file? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and it basically said, I'm sorry, how about this? And how about this? And how about this? But it was very sure of itself. Oh, yeah. And it's, Until it wasn't. And then it was well, like, no, oh, it, I'm sorry. It was very sure of itself every single time. I'm sorry for that. This is how you do it. No, I'm sorry. This is how you do it. And it, I went through like 12 iterations and I finally said, uh, you know, I figured it out. And it said, oh, would you please now, share the solution you, with me? You, you figured it out because of the path it led you on, correct? Yeah. I mean, it, it was like having a conversation with somebody who knew kind of what it should do, but wasn't quite syntactically good and and was just going over the same routine over and over again and i just thought differently about it and i said well maybe here's a better way to do it so i shared the uh solution with chat gpt and so i guess i don't know what happened maybe it went in but however was it also last week that one of our um rd friends patrick uh had a conversation with chat gpt and and convinced it that 
Yes. X plus Y was not equal to Z when it was. Yeah, that was li- mm-hmm. literally something like uh, 12 plus 5 was equal to you 21. Know, or something. Yeah, something, yep. something crazy. Yep. Yeah, and it said, I'm sorry, you're right. 12 plus right. 5 does equal 21. So that right. just that just proves AI will dismiss you if it thinks you're stupid too. Right. Yeah, you know what? You're right. It doesn't have the courage of its convictions. But But then- I went and I asked it what 12 plus 5 was and it said 17. So I, yeah, I, you know. Yeah. I think, I think it's when that, like, it's like you're at that party and your crazy uncle comes up and he's like, <laughs> I wear this tinfoil hat so the aliens don't get to my brain. Well, and you go, right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're right. I should, right. I should okay. wear one. I'm so, sorry. Okay. I, I wonder <laughs> if nice it would, <laughs> I wonder if it would like accept your assertion that the earth is flat. Oh, that's interesting. It would. Eventually it would. You can, you can convince it of anything. If you don't want to listen to what it says, I've seen all sorts of different, like, I've even, <laughs> I've even seen responses <laughs> where people are like, please stop beating up on chat GPT. Honestly, mm. you're just bullying it at this point. Like, right. like be that nice. That is the worst cyberbullying. Right. You're bullying computers. The most literal cyberbullying. And when the robots take over, they'll remember. Well, well, I thought this was a security show. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so it's, it's about cutting edge technology because because every time a new technology comes into the world, there's those who say it's going to end the world and those that say it's going to save the world. And right. most of the time, it's really how you apply it. Bringing electricity into your home is a horrible idea because of the risk of fire, mm. but it brings so many advantages. We've learned to figure mm. out how to you know, live with that and how to, how to do it. The same is true here as far as whether it's going to make it harder for some people to write stories or it'll enable other people to write stories. Patrick, I got it. I know exactly what you're saying. We need an AI circuit breaker. <laughs> we do. We do that definitely sounds need like that. As soon as great somebody idea. invents the AI circuit breaker, it'll be, everything will be safe. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought you wanted all those volts into your body, Patrick. <laughs> I didn't say I had electricity in my house. I'm just saying when you bring it into other people's houses. <laughs> I won't confirm or deny whether I have electricity or not. I, uh-huh. I use dark uh-huh. energy. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's fancy. Uh, that dark energy is lighting up your face right now, as far as I can see. So uh, something's going on here. All right. So what can we do about CNET? Uh, is there anything? Does it Don't believe them. Just <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I think a lot of it. A lot of it comes down to any content you read on the internet. You need to find multiple sources for. You can't just go and oh, well, I always follow CNET, and this has got to be the truth because it could be coming from multiple places and put together by AI. I. I predict that within 10 years, there will be a labeling system where you have to label content if it was any of it is AI generated. Oh, that'd be, that's a great idea. How would you know if it goes through so many iterations? You ever heard of the game telephone? Right. Well, if it's proven, if it's proven that it's AI generated in any step, then there'll be like some kind of fine at the, at the government level over government. It's the same thing we do with food, food now. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yep. You, you need to prove what's in it. Because 100 years ago, there was no labeling on food. Right. You had no I know, idea what words. I mean, you can start with something that's AI generated and then do the, the student thing, which is say it in another way. And it's well, still then, wrong. Uh, yeah. You, but it's, it's not literally wrong. It's just morally wrong. So, no, no the, what you're saying could be literally wrong because you started with a, an AI generated sentence that was wrong and sure. you're just paraphrasing. Oh, I see it. what you're saying. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. still wrong, but it's not AI generated. At that but point, I think to it? that point, though, the first text you started with, that AI generated text that you're going to quasi plagiarize, if it was labeled as this is, an, this is an AI generated text, then you might be like, oh, okay, well, they may be wrong. Oh, right? Uh, right. Okay. Ooh. What if we come up with a mark of the web per word? Mm. Mark M-O-T-W-P-W. of the AI. T W P W. I, I like want to mark. I want to trademark right. the word the. We, we spend, we're spending too much time on this story. <laughs> yeah, move on, people. Move <laughs> let's, on. Let's talk about something fun like actively exploited oh, iOS zero days so on older awesome. iPhones and iPads. Because that's fun. Yeah, that is fun. Fortunately, uh, so th- it's on older iPhones and iPads, and nobody has older iPhones or iPads. No, because everybody they're updates all obsolete every time. after a year. Right. Yeah. Everybody wants to throw out last year's model and buy the new one. Yeah, but if you don't. are, if you are still holding on to that iPhone 5S, 6, 6 Plus, iPad Air, iPad Mini 2, iPad Mini 3, or iPad Touch, sixth generation, um, this uh, affects you. There is an a zero day exploit 
that was discovered that is patched in iOS 12.5.7. So uh, connect that device to the internet, get it all updated, and you should be good to go. So and I while, have these while old you're de- connecting it to the internet, it will be hacked. Yeah, yeah right. Pretty much. So Sorry, I have Carl. some of these old devices. I use the phones for cameras as cameras because mm. they're great cameras, and I use sure. an old iPad Air for um, for mixing the band. Yep. Um, oh, nice. So so those are still vulnerable, like right? It's not like uh, if you connect it to the internet, it's vulnerable. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. They can't run the fix. Right. Yeah. Pre- they can't run the OS that runs the fix. Yeah, and it's and it's uh, it says processing malicious maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. So you okay. could be browsing a website in the Safari browser. And and the way that the code on the site is, it can exploit the device. So it's not like, oh, hey, right, like cool. we've talked a lot about apps in the app store, right? And you, and Carl may say, you know what? I'm not adding apps to my mixing iPad. I just use yeah. it to mix. I already have all the apps I need. But, and I honestly don't even connect it to the internet that good. often. But the next right. time I connect it, the very first thing I'm going to do is update it. Good. Uh, can those be updated? Um, I don't think they can. They can't run the version of OS that has the update, can they? Um, I don't know. I mean, I still get updates for those old devices, you know, update to the latest OS or whatever. Right. I can still do that. Oh, no, it did address it. I'm sorry. I, mis- I misunderstood. I thought these were orphaned and they couldn't be protected. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. these are these. They do have an update for. This is an All interesting right. issue too. This is this is what's called it, and they obviously Apple's very like secretive about like what the real deal is with the X plane. Right. But if you do read the description, it does say a type confusion issue was addressed. Um, and this is where you know Carl, uh, you know, will will be more intimate with this as a as a hardcore developer than Patrick and I as just security pundits. But you know, when you say hardcore and intimate in the same sentence in a security show, <laughs> you know, the red goes flags to a weird go place. Off and moms right now are shutting their just kids, just shutting it off. right off, and that's Shut probably that thing a good right move. Down. It's probably a good move. <laughs> um, so, type confusion is an interesting hack. Where let's say, for example. Um, you know, in your code, you say, if some variable equals true. Right. Well, what's true? Can I pass in a one instead of the Boolean value of true? Mm-hmm. Sometimes, yes. Can I pass in any string of text, like, quote, a quote? Does that evaluate to true? Mm-hmm. Sometimes, yes, because there's not nothing there. There's something right. there, which right. is an A, so it's true. So... Type confusion is where your code is expecting some type and the user has the ability to then supply a different type that evaluates to something that they want it to, to bypass a security mechanism, right. whatever it may be. Um, they're really kind of neat. Uh, Could be neat a function exploits. that yeah. executes some code and returns true. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So there's all yeah. sorts of really neat ways to manipulate uh, evaluations. And you know what's interesting too, why I find it interesting, is is different languages do it in different ways, right? So depending on the language you're trying to exploit, the evaluation of, of variable to variable can be very different, right? Um, so there's there's some cool things in there. But Cool. All right. Patch, so patch, there patch. you go. Patch everything. And All right. So now it's time to pick on LastPass a little bit more. <laughs> uh, this is a story from TechCrunch. LastPass owner GoTo says hackers stole customers' backups. LastPass's parent company, GoTo, formerly LogMeIn, has confirmed that cyber criminals stole customers' encrypted backups during a recent breach of its systems. So we have been, you know, when we <laughs> when we first started hearing about breaches. Our reaction was like, ah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. They didn't get your master <laughs> passwords. Nobody has mm-hmm. your passwords. Uh, and then it was like another breach happened or some more news came out. Oh, maybe they did get passwords, but they can't decrypt them without the keys. And now it's like boom, boom, <laughs> boom. One you know after what another. Happening? I think the, I think the hackers are listening to this show because we're That's like, ah, oh, they don't have the keys, and they're like, you know what, we oh, should get, we, we should get, get keys. keys. You know, I think, very important. I think they're following an approach. There's an old <laughs> joke. squirrel. What's Let that? <laughs> Whoa! You don't know let me tell, let me you, tell you a story. So this this guy went on vacation, <laughs> right, and his so. brother was watching his cat. Yeah. And uh, the guy called up to say, hey, how's everything going? He says, he's, he says it's okay. Your cat died. And he's oh. like, oh, my gosh. You shouldn't <laughs> tell me that like that. And he's like, well, how am I supposed to tell you? He says, you should ease me into it. You should say the cat got out of the house and you're trying to track him down. And then the next day you say the cat was up on the roof and, you know, you're trying to get him down. And then the next day the cat fell off the roof and he's at the vet. And 
you know, right. it's it's working on it. And then and then you could tell me the cat died the next day and I would be ready for it. Mm. He's like, okay, I, I understand now. He says, how's mom? He says, mom's on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> as long as we're telling jokes, here's one that you reminded me of. Guy goes on vacation, lets his buddy use his house, and he calls a week later and uh, has everything with the house. And his buddy says, oh, the dog died. How, how did the dog die? Oh, he, he ate some bad horse meat. Horse meat? Where'd he get horse meat? Oh, the, the, the horse died, and the dog ate the meat, and the meat was bad, and the dog died. Well, how'd the horse die? Uh, he, he died in the fire. What fire? Oh, the barn <laughs> caught on fire. See, the barn caught on fire, killed the horse, the dog ate the meat, and died. How'd the, how'd the barn catch on fire? Oh, it caught from the house. <laughs> uh, house <laughs> no, you see the house it went up in flames and then it burned the barn and the horse and the dog and the meat and it goes on and on and on that's awesome the that's a good died. way to ease them into it that's, a, you know? that's how last pass is delivering this news <laughs> you're right <laughs> um, your date is on the roof yeah your date is on the roof <laughs> <laughs> call us back tomorrow <laughs> Oh, it's it's. If it weren't so true, it wouldn't be so funny. Uh, so awesome. <laughs> uh, so awesome. I so in this case, they did also get the keys. Uh, Go to said that the intruders exfiltrated customers' encrypted backups as well as the company's keys for securing said encrypted backups. Yeah. So unencrypted backups. Yeah. How <laughs> 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 they get we unencrypted? Like to call- <laughs> unencrypted now the tornado tore the door off the house but the door was locked so it's okay uh, so you know the the recommendation here is if you have a go to account in any way reset the password reset your mfa yeah make sure your 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 and account is still secure more secure now secure how about that your account is now secure and here's what here's another thing that you should remember after you get on to another password manager and you lo- leave LastPass, change all your effing passwords. Yeah. It's going to be a pain. It's going to hurt for a little while. Every single one of them. I, I had to do it. Mm-hmm. And there was a couple of hundred passwords. I basically spent the day. I got myself a nice bottle yep. of wine and I just mm-hmm. went to it. And that's what you, you watch mm-hmm. a lot of TV at night. Just every time there's a commercial, change a password. Actually, mm-hmm. you can do it while you watch TV. It's not like you're going to miss anything. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about television here. Yeah. Wow. Ceasefire. Target's down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So much for LastPass. Now let's talk about gaming. I love gaming. There's a company, Riot Games, and uh, they received a ransom email for stolen source code following a social engineering hack. And they said to the uh, ransomers, up yours. We're not paying it. What do you think, Patrick? Good for them. You shouldn't pay it. I mean, yeah. eventually it's going to be illegal to pay it or it's just going to be the insurance companies are going to stop paying it. But if you've got good procedures and you've got good backups, you shouldn't have to pay it. But all you're doing is funding the next ransomware and they'll come faster and faster. These guys uh, took code for League of Legends. <gasps> okay. Team Fight Tactics. I don't know these games, but somebody out there does. We do. They got Valorant. Yeah. yeah needless well, they didn't to get say, Valorant, we won't but... pay. They said. Right. Yeah, good for them. Patrick, good for as long them. As they don't steal my battle ostrich. Right? Wait Patrick's very second. happy about that. I love the kid in the picture in this game room or whatever. <laughs> he's, got, he's like 14 <laughs> or 13. He's screaming, right? he's he's screaming he's into a gaming headset. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's about, <laughs> weighs about 89 pounds. Right, he's got uh-huh. braces, and the kid uh-huh. next to him's just as goofy, and they're all just playing. It's Those are millionaires. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> yep. And each of them making more than our entire company, I'm sure. You know, the funny thing was there was a Farside cartoon in the probably in the 90s, right? When Farside was a thing. And it was uh, a kid playing on a game console and the uh, parents sitting by reading the newspaper and they're wishing, they're, you know, they have wish bubbles and they're wishing that they're reading ads like, wanted gamer to kill the golden buddha or you know <laughs> must have you know 15 million dollars a year must have uh you know slayed dragon x or whatever you know it's like you know wishful thinking and then it yep. turns out to be true yeah right <laughs> i just i'm a stupid programmer i should have gotten to gaming right well 
All right. So now this next story came from First Post. I'm not so sure I believe it, but Dwayne was telling me a little bit beforehand that it's completely possible. Su- super I, I possible. Just, all right. So here's the headline. China spying on people via fridges, laptops, and light bulbs, former UK diplomat warns. Yeah. According to a report sent to the government by the former diplomat, uh, it's said that the Trojan horse technology poses a wide range of threats to the national security of the country. So, of course, they're spying on the UK. And if they're spying on the UK, they're probably spying on us. But I just didn't understand, and I still don't understand, how a light bulb can spy on you. Okay. Can you it's enlighten got, me? It's got network connection. Yeah. Yeah, let's say let's say it's a smart light bulb, like one of the Philips light bulbs or whatever, right, that you can turn on and off with your phone. Well, you need to be able to talk to it. Right. So it can you can either talk to it over something like Zigbee or Bluetooth or whatever. But for the most part, those are going to be wirelessly attached. So you're going to add it to your Wi-Fi network. And now with an app on your phone, you can control it. Well, there's nothing to say that whoever put that light bulb together didn't throw an extra little circuit board in there that can watch the data on the network as it's flowing. Right. Can put it in what's called promiscuous mode and just see data coming and going and transmit it. All right, it's that transmitting part I have a problem with because anybody who, you know, any kind of Dwayne person like per, Dwayne like person can put a sniffer, a network sniffer on that phone and see what's going out and what's coming in. Isn't it really risky for a government? All right, it's risky enough for a hacker, but isn't it risky enough for a government to put any kind of ET phone home technology in a light bulb? So, I I'm I'm holding a board here that's about Two inches by three inches in size. Raspberry Pi thing. This is a 5G cellular board. Okay. And that's a dev board. Okay. What they're talking about is a cellular board that they, that they can get down to like an inch by an inch square that they'll put in the device and it communicates over cellular. You won't see it. It connects to a 5G network. So you're sitting uh, at home and it connects to the cellular network at home. And start that's one broadcasting strategy. what it's. There's sees. other ways to do it too. Yeah, absolutely. There are plenty of ways to do it. I mean, I I could think of five or six different ways I would exfil. For example, if if it were me. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hang on. Hang on. It's criminal career advice. Now you realize you're about to divulge a secret to a nation state <laughs> that it's not that secret. None of the nation states are wondering about how to do this. All right. So it's okay. So, so there have Joe's been plenty of networks. com is wondering how they can spy on their customers. Dwayne's going to yes. tell Yes. So there have been Go plenty Dwayne. of customers where we've been in the middle of the, the most secretive stuff and had the thought, how do we get it off this network? Just like what you're talking about. How do we get this data off this network without the customer noticing? Um, and there are tons of ways to do it. DNS requests. <laughs> DNS requests. If I, if I make a request to www.microsoft.com, right? Well, that goes out to the internet and it asks the dot com server where the Microsoft server is and it asks the Microsoft server, where's the www server? And that comes back with an address. Well, what if I have hackers dot com and I ask for the, um, a six two five three f a six two dot hackers dot com server? That eventually will make it to me as a server, and I, I take that and I hold it, and I wait for the next thing to come in, the next request. And they keep sending me host names Air quote. that are the hex values of the data I'm trying to exfil. So I now am pumping all this information, files, executables, usernames, and passwords through DNS. Who watches that? Cheapbulbs.com. And I'm, I, I'm making that. Cheapbulbs.ru. <laughs> <My or actually>. <laughs> China. Um, <laughs> wow. And, wow. And what they're, what they're doing is <laughs> Why not, they're, making you know, a re- just... <laughs> they're making a request <laughs> no to, for you. <laughs> to their, 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 their domain. Yeah. But yeah. it looks like they're looking for a particular server on that domain, but they're, they're leaking that data. All right. But uh, can't somebody find that somewhere and say hey this is suspicious yeah absolutely it's a cat and mouse game so there there are secure dns server solutions that you can implement in your environment for buku dollars usually that are designed to detect these things um i actually uh, am a robotics coach uh and one of my co-coaches works for one of these companies that that's what they look for um but then there are ways to bypass those types of things so it's an arms race right guys hang on one second i, I just have questions here because i know enough to be dangerous about dns yes. um 
So if I'm on my phone, can't I set a specific DN? If I connect to my Wi-Fi, my default router, uh, you know, address is the DNS server. Right. Yes. So can I just look and see what my phone is accessing through DNS through that through those logs? No. So no? let's say let's take this scenario. I like this scenario. You have a, we have a malicious app on your phone, and we're trying to exfiltrate um, all of the latest security this week podcasts. Which may details. or may not be a true statement. Okay. Which may or <laughs> <laughs> So you sit at home and you open up your DNS and you see it's pointing at your router at the house. And you're like, all right, cool. It's, it's, uh, it's pointing at the right server. But when it makes a request out to patrickhines.com, what server is responding to that? One that I control. Patrick's server. Yeah. So that's true. it will go out through it, your valid DNS server. That's right. And make a request out to Patrick's server. That's right. And then it will get back. And if I make a request for a server that doesn't exist, can can I turn log logging on at my DNS? Sure. And so I will, when I see that, oh, absolutely. You might see, uh, hey, there's a lot of requests. There was ten thousand requests to Patrick Hines. Yeah, ten thousand requests to yeah. hackers.com with all these. Different- I can tell you, of all of the people that I've met, none of them are watching DNS logs. Just is, did people don't watch it? Right, so there's all these different ways to exfiltrate data. So, so you not only divulged the way to get around it, you also divulged a way to catch them. And you're right. The way to protect against this is to use some either a product like a secure DNS product, or to monitor DNS logs. And it's just you know it's one exfil uh, path, but it's one right now that that a lot of people aren't watching and is actually being exploited quite a bit. What's um, especially what by does that mean? Um, so to exfiltrate data, oh, exfiltrate. um, or to infiltrate data, like we'll, we'll do things like infiltrating tools through DNS. We actually had one customer who locked us out of the internet entirely from the box we were on. But because we could make DNS queries to the domain controller, the domain controller then went out to the internet on our behalf and came back with the results of our requests, which ended up being, uh, tools. Wow. So we were pulling full executables through DNS. Wow. Which was awesome because we're talking like thousands of requests. Um, so yeah, that would be the solution is a security NAS provider, um, and, and watching logs. All right. Uh, and before we move on, let's, uh, pause for a little break. We'll be right back after these messages. And we're back. This is Carl Franklin. You're listening to Security This Week. That's Patrick Hines and Dwayne LaFlotte. And, uh, they're the experts and I'm the guy with the dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> not true not true <laughs> all right so let's talk about so so much for china uh let's talk about the ransomware access brokers using google ads to breach your network what yeah it's it's unfortunate i you know i've i now have my kids trained that when they go and do searches on the internet like through google don't click the ads um the first like Half a page, don't click on anything. Yeah, you're <laughs> Scroll right. Scroll all the way down until you get to the real well, site. Well, they will tell you, you know, sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. And it's usually the first page, but you don't always look for that little moniker, do you? No, Maybe. and it's super small. I do, but it's super small. There have been plenty of times where I'm like, it's in big, bold print. It says, you know, like, this is the download for so-and-so. And I'm right. like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was looking for. And then it dawns on me, oh, wait, go back out. No, it says ad. It's not the right thing. Right. And I, Yeah, it's sometimes hard to see. So what if you're navigating Facebook, let's say, and you because they put ads in your feed all the time. But, you know, sometimes sure. it's stuff that you might actually be interested in. They do a pretty good job of that. So let's say you see an ad for, you know, Joe's Discount Sharkages.com and you think, you know, I'm going to the Caribbean and I need a shark cage and I don't really have all that much money. I'm going to, I want to see that. So what I normally do is I get another browser entirely and I just type out, you know, yeah. the, the, whatever the product name or the website name, if it's there and just go there directly. That's yeah. a good practice, but it's always risky to go buy something from someone you've never heard of or never talked yeah, to I, I could i could set up an ad and i could set up a site and i could sell discount search shark cages and still be a malicious yeah, well, yeah I guess but I, you know what you can't yeah you're paranoid patrick because honestly <laughs> you can't just buy everything from amazon because you know amazon's not you know they're a big well-known and, company like i get it you know if you wait long enough if you wait long enough anything you want your neighbors will order and you just steal it from their porch <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> As his neighbor's like, ooh. <laughs> now I know where that shark cage went. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. But I do, I do honestly, I like I like the approach you have, Carl, because you know it's it's interesting. You may be targeted based on some of the data that your browser knows about right. you, which is cookie data and advertising data and that sort of stuff. So switching to a different browser or opening up your browser in incognito Duck, Duck, mode. Go, man. Um, going, I use DuckDuckGo all the all time. The time. Um, so, you know, using those those things, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Well, if your search engine is free, then you're the product. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if your search the engine pro- is free. any product is free, then you're the product. And and yep. all the search 100%. engines are free. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and it, and also, you know, try to find some ratings. And that's what I do like about Amazon is that I can tell that a, a product is good by the ratings, you know, and – and I right. not only look yeah. for the number of good ratings, but also the bad ones. And people who have one-star reviews, I go and I look and see what their problems are. And if, you know, even right. two or more people have the same problem, then that, that you know, and it's not addressed. It depends on the problem. Although, both though bad ratings probably mean it's a real thing. Yeah. If it's only got good ratings, then you might, it might be too good to be true. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the Especially other Especially a small yeah. number. Yep. I wonder if Chat GPT could be doing ratings. Hmm. Uh, there are definitely AI bots that do ratings, but all right. So who wants this one? Ooh, I'll take it. All right. Ooh, ooh, me. Ooh, me. <laughs> Mr. Kata. <laughs> like, Rorschach. Rorschach. <laughs> Rorschach. 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 Yes. Rorschach. Rorschach. You know, Rorschach. You, you're not a real. You brewer. did not. I did meet Ron Palillo. I hung out and drank with him. Really? Yeah. yeah this was out. a few That's years awesome. ago. It was before he died, obviously. But he, uh, it was. That was the best time to hang out with him. Oh, of course. Yeah. He, afterwards, not so much. <laughs> he went to college with a with a friend that I took a, a movie script writing class from. Oh, cool. And he got him to star in his movie, which is called The Curse of Micah Rood, M-I-C-A-H, Rood, R-O-O-D. And he was great. He was great in it. And they showed it at our local, you know, um, movie theater and uh the producer and director and the writer and uh, me because i did some music in it we all got together at a party afterwards and uh and and they all <laughs> I, it's I, he was such a sweet guy and I, and he's gone now yeah. so i don't i don't want to disparage him but everybody said don't bring up welcome back cotter Oh my God! Just don't. It's a sore subject with him. Okay, just don't really? bring it up. So you know, we got a few bourbons in. And I'm like, dude, welcome back, Connor. You were so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everybody's like, don't get your money. But he he just let go. He like let loose with all these stories of of all the different people and. You know, wow. I mean, I gave him some praise. I was like, I told I him mean, my John, favorite. I mean, John Travolta was on that show. He's the one, biggest oh, yeah. name to come out yeah. of that. Vinny Barbarino, was him. that him? Like, you know, he never returned his calls and stuff. He was really kind of bitter about all those guys. There was mm. a few people that wow. he hung out with. And I just found out Robert Hedges, the guy who played Epstein, just died. Oh, So wow. they were they were good buddies. But yeah. um, huh. but anyway, I thought it was funny. I I, I I charmed him into telling the stories, so it was great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's Look, awesome. liquor it up, liquor it up. Yeah, it always works. <laughs> Bourbon works. All right, what's this exploit? Yeah. All right. So this this one, I I, I always You're way love too these. excited about this. Well, so these are these type of exploits I really like. So this is like super deep crypto API stuff. Um, there's a patch for it. So if you're really worried, don't worry about it. Just make sure stuff's patched. That's the the moral here. But patch, patch, patch. what's really cool here, what's really cool here is it's a way of manipulating the local crypto API so that you can falsify the signing of code oh. and manipulate the way that the X509 certificates are so you can spoof their identity. So that's really deep. Wow. But what's even better than that is where it came from. <laughs> the NSA said, oh, by the way, we know about this little thing you guys might want to fix. Just throwing that out there. Just helping. Just doing our just doing our due diligence. Yeah. And Patrick and I always joke around when the NSA comes out with a bug because it's, it's for one of two reasons. Either A, it's so bad and so exploited in the field, they have to let people know. It's out of the bag. Yeah. Or B, they've already got their use out of it for the last five or six years and they go, you know what? We should let people know. Let's let people know. <laughs> yeah. One of the enemies is confirmed to be using it. So they're like, let's, let's screw that. Let's, you know, we're not going to let them do it. Yeah, exactly. We've been using it for a decade, <laughs> but now that they have it, you know what? 
Okay, let's let everybody know. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the balance, honestly. And we joke, but um, in that, in the book by Nicole Perlroth, uh, this is how they tell me the world ends. She actually talks about the calculus behind um, intelligence agencies deciding whether to release a zero day and, ex- and tell the vendor so they can fix it. Yeah. Or what type of intel they'll get from it and for how long, because there's a shelf life on it. Um, so there, there is actually a formula they use to decide whether they're going to notify the, the vendor and get it fixed or whether they're going to leave systems vulnerable so that they can then exploit it for intel. Um, so that's, that's a real thing. So is this the same as the mimic ransomware? I don't think of the same. All right. Well, then this is new. Security researchers discovered a new ransomware strain they named Mimic that leverages the APIs of the Everything file search tool for Windows to look for files targeted for encryption. Discovered in June 2022 by researchers at cybersecurity company Trend Micro, the malware appears to target mainly English and Russian-speaking users. Coincidence? I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some of, sorry I, I apologize some of the code in, in mimic shares similarities with conti ransomware the source of which was leaked in march 2022 by a ukrainian researcher so it begins <laughs> this is cool i'm because you guys haven't seen it, i'll read it um the, the attacks begin with the victim receiving an, an executable presumably by email don't ever click on email attachments, mm. which extracts four files on the target system, including the main payload, ancillary files, including the main payload, ancillary files, and tools to disable Windows Defender. Oops. <laughs> Mimic is a versatile ransomware strain that supports command line arguments to narrow file targeting, while it can also make use of multiple processor threads to speed up the data encryption process. Yikes! That's awesome. I mean, terrible. It's it's no, terrible it's awesome. in an awesome way. Or awesome, Terribly awesome. Or awesome in a terrible way. <laughs> wow. Um. So that's interesting, and it it looks like it exploits already known search data. Is that what I'm reading here? I'm wondering if if this actually leverages um, some of the system search corpus already, right? You go to your system and you try and search for a file. Obviously, Windows already knows where a lot of those files yeah. are. So as a ransomware vendor, uh, <laughs> <it's> ra- <laughs> just another yeah, company it on, on the the- <laughs> Tech 500. A ransomware it sounds vendor. Sounds like I say that Hi, like I'm it's a Dwayne, normal thing. I work for a ransomware vendor. <laughs> Are you looking for good ransomware? Here's my car. Twin can help you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So there's, so if you're building your ransomware kids and you want it to take take over a system really fast, you could either try and search the drive, which is really slow, or you could ask Windows what it knows about the files, and that might be much faster. This is actually really nice. It's a well. I mean, you know, nicely evil <laughs> for ransomware. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking uh, now. Please. Thank you. I think we're done. That's a show. If we were a public company, our stock price would be plummeting right now. <laughs> or would it? Or would it? Yeah, that's... Uh, all right, guys. Thanks very much. And thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time on Security This Week. Sounds good. Good time, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.